Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Brigaton. Now you may notice a bit of an echo in the background. Uh, I just moved and this office hasn't been set up yet. In fact, I probably have to buy stuff to insulate it because it's bigger than the last one. Um, but just know that I am working on it, so just bear with me. It'll probably be like this for uh, hopefully no more than four or five episodes, but we'll see. Hopefully sooner. Depends how well the rest of the unpacking goes. Now let's see how our army's doing. Oh boy. We lost a lot of units. All right, let's recruit. Oh, this army's full, that's why. Okay. Alright, I'm not going to do anything with the other army until reinforcements get there because they are uh, worse for wear. And we're going to head back this way and grab those reagents. I knew there was something back there. Do not fear! Do not waver! You've crossed the wrong mongrel. A very good chance she's gonna kill one of us. This was not part of the plan. There's more behind us. You won't survive me. Endure this. All right, we're alive. That's all that matters. Oh, also, I need to give land that robe we found. We get an extra plus one to his armor class of uh, through a dodge bonus, and he gets a plus two enhancement bonus on attack and damage rolls with unarmed attacks, and all of his attacks are considered unarmed as long as he has a bow. His DPS just went up a significant amount. So he gets three attacks per round, so he's getting an extra plus six, a potential plus six damage. Uh, yeah, we should, we should probably rest. I'm not going to push it here. Uh, people died in the Vescovor Swarm in seconds. They died in agony. They did not have time to prepare for death or even pray. Horrible. Yes, such is the fate of those who stand against the Abyss. Losses are unavoidable. But dwelling on those losses will jeopardize one's own moral. Or morale, not moral. I didn't read it. A so primitive altar. An ugly structure, crudely constructed out of branches, rocks, and bones, stands here. Beneath it Beneath it rest offerings to some unknown deity, or more likely a demon. Let's go this way and see what's going on. Close ranks. Make every strike count. No glory without You've crossed risk. the wrong mongrel. Retreat is not an option. Nice try. Didn't work, though. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> we just got Bucephalus back. Let's try this way. I'll go ahead. Alright, I'm pretty sure this path is just for the uh, level 7 demon army that's waiting for us. Alright, we made it. Perfect. I know the way. Now the quartermaster flashes you his usual grin, but it fades almost immediately. What a march, eh, Commander? Oh, forget it. Not a million years. I can't stop shaking whenever I think about the leper's smile. We lost too many good men. Spirits are low in the camp. Some soldiers can't shake off the horrors they've seen. Others are mourning their friends. What if we... But awake. Lit up the bonfires, poured some wine, raised our cups in memory of the fallen. And to do the troops a reward of good. You know, we can commemorate the fallen. Give the soldiers some wine. But not enough for them to get smashed. Never, Commander. Everything will be proper, solemn, and with due respect for the fallen. We're mourning the dead, not celebrating a wedding. Alright, so we got some goodies for some of our companions. Follow my lead. I decided on making a different scroll before. I don't remember what it was. You're a master at drinking and having a good time. Have you ever thought of putting all that to good use? By throwing a charity banquet or something? My mother used to do such things, but I... I... I don't have time for such deathly dullness. Next, you'll be suggesting I traipse around the homes of deserving poor, basket in arm. Yeah, that is a slippery slope. Hi, welcome back to the ward of the well, kind of living. Because he is, uh, he is death touched. I don't think I have any companions I need to talk to, so we can just continue. Though I should look into buying some stuff. Alright, so we have the inconspicuous camp. Uh, not far from one of the canyon walls in the world wound, on the forests, an inconspicuous camp is hidden, well protected from the prying eyes of both demons and crusaders alike. You can only find it if you know exactly where to look. And thankfully we do. Time's not waiting. Let me help. Alright, I think I remember this that place as well. Far. There shouldn't be any fighting here, so I'm not gonna wait waste time with buffing.
All right, so an elven I'll note for the storyteller. Can't hide from me. A wand of dimension door mass. Give that to Nenio. I know the way. All right, Krinook. The edge kobold sitting by the small campfire. Pretty tooth and amicable get gesture. He doesn't reach for his weapon or his threateningly. All in all, his behavior is highly unusual for one of his kind. His clothes look quite unusual too. Not many kobolds opt for human clothing, nor, they, nor do they adorn their possessions with spikes or scales. Greetings, my name is Krinook. I'm all alone here, so you may safely come closer. He speaks smoothly, without the usual kobold hissing. Moving slightly aside, Kobold points to the carcass of a small animal on a stick, roasting over the fire. I didn't want to be ready soon. Who are you? As I've already mentioned, my name is Krinook, at your service. The Kobold offers a short bow, an unusual gesture for one of his kind to make. As a rule, Kobolds do not express their respect to anyone other than dragons. I'm a traveler and a friend of the Crusade. I can be your friend too, if you're tolerant toward Kobolds. Krinook utters the word toler tolerant with shocking ease, as if he is something other than the narrow-minded and savage subterranean beast you expect him to be. Kobolds are infamous for worshipping dragons, despising all other races, and few of them would even understand the concept of tolerance, let alone subscribe to it. Wait, what did you just say? Tolerant. Are you sure you're a kobold? Ah, so you saw through my disguise. Krinook tried to mislead you with sweet words and then ambush you. Kobold utters a loud hiss, which then morphs into an amused chuckle. Of course I'm a kobold. Trust me. You're not the first to be shocked after hearing me speak, realizing that I'm not going to rob or kill you. I'm lucky. Representatives of other races want to be seen as intellectuals or decent conversationalists. They have to read a lot of books, refine their manners, possess a passing knowledge of classical theater, and douse themselves in fine perfume. Whereas in my case, all I have to do is not lunge at you with a spear or hiss every other word. Also, you might hear my cat in the background. He's still getting used to the new place as well. And was it you who left me that note? A couple of shrugs. Of course. Who else could it be? I wanted to make sure you were interested in the information I can provide. A nod at the bonfire. What are you cooking? Judging by its ears and hind legs, it's a hare. A couple of cast a dubious glance at the animal's mouth, which boasts a, a set of huge teeth. Or maybe it's a tiger. Depends on your point of view, I suppose. And what do you want from me? I want nothing from you. I'm asking for nothing. I'm simply offering help. I sympathize with your cause, so I'd like to provide whatever support I can from time to time. Does that work for you? Kobold stops and looks at you expectantly. How exactly can you help me? With advice, mostly. Throughout my life, I've seen a lot. That piece of timely advice can be extremely valuable. Don't you agree? Of course, if your advisor is a kobold, the merits are not so obvious, but you're in luck. This kobold right here has extensive knowledge of a variety of matters that you may find useful someday. After some thought, he nods toward the campfire. One more thing I have to offer is this hair, after it's cooked. How do you know so much about demons? My critic gives you a long and heavy look. I've had some experience with them. I don't want to go into de the details right now. All I'm saying is that after a sh rather short, not even hostile encounter with them, I stopped eating meat for several years. And what's the catch? No catch. I'm acting for wholly altruistic reasons, but my motives are something I would rather not reveal. Critic turns his face to you, and his wrinkles become more visible in the glow of the fire. We just met five minutes ago. Do you think it's too early to expect complete candor just yet? As I've already told you, I'm a friend of the Crusade. You choose to trust me, or you can leave. Offer help and ask for nothing in return. But the question is simple. Will you accept the claw of friendship from a stranger, or is your distrust stronger than your need for help? Well, thank you. We would appreciate any help. I critic nods agreeably. Then we have a deal. You won't regret your decision. Just drop by my camp every now and then, so we can have a word. 
Perhaps I'll be able to give you some useful tips. Pulling out a small knife, the traveler carefully cuts off two strips of meat from the roasted hare. He throws one into his toothy maw, while graciously offering the other to you. A strange animal for sure, but it seems edible. Energies of the world wound mask everything in delusion. Harmless looking animals try to eat you for dinner. Dangerous paths appear to be straight roads. And your enemies. Sometimes your enemies can look like your friends. Krennic squints and looks deeply into your eyes. Have you ever been in a situation like this? First, you think a person is your friend and ally. Then the scales fall from your eyes, and you realize you're actually your sworn enemy. So you catch, so you catch this person, you tie them up, then you start thinking, how should you treat them now? Like your enemy? Like your former friend? It's hard to decide. What would you do if one of your friends turned out to be a traitor? Are you talking about someone specific? Wow, your question reeks of paranoia. No, I'm not talking about anyone specific. I'm not implicating anyone. A couple of chuckles. I'm sorry. Since my joke has spoiled your sleep for the next few nights. Yeah, those who have lost their way must be saved. We need to help them return to the path of righteousness. Did some cleric tell you that? Now, have you ever seen even one of those who's returned to the path of righteousness? Stop listening to others and use your head. We're not talking about children here. The decision to collaborate with demons is a little different from yanking on the family cat's tail. To make such a decision, a person has to be a truly vile scumbag. But just where do you, you people get this beautiful na naivety from? Something in Krennic's voice sounds merciless, like cold steel. If you catch a traitor, grab them and shake them till they spill everything they know. Some need to be tortured. Others will crack if you threaten their family or bribe them with the promise of mercy and gold. Bring the traitor dry, like a rag mop, and think about war, not about ethics. At least, that's what smart people write in books. The fervor fades from the, kobold, from the kobold's voice, but subtle glints still flicker in his eyes. You got really worked up there. Who, me? Not at all. You say that like you're an expert on kobolds, as if you can intuit our deepest feelings and emotions. Yeah, I'm not convinced. A couple of shrugs. Was I trying to convince you? I was just stating my opinion. Then again, if we're discussing traitors, it's fortunate that betrayal is not reserved for mortals alone. Demons stab each other in the back far more frequently. The rumor is that there are at least two demon stashes within Dresden, filled with arms and supplies that were stolen by Descarites from Baphomites, and vice versa. One of them is near the entrance to the fortress, while another, li while another one lies by the entrance to the citadel. Where did you learn that? Gossip, hearsay. Uh, the world is an ocean of chatter. I am quite a skilled fisherman. Well, that is valuable information. Of course it is. I wouldn't waste your time. Cracking his knuckles, Krennic gives you an inquisitive look. Hope that when the time comes for you to make real decisions instead of hypothetical ones, your wisdom won't fail you. This one bad choice can turn a revered leader into a disgraced pariah. I've seen it happen before. I lived through something like that. My tribe suffered a disaster caused by just one bad choice. Can you even imagine? The bolts went sadly, his shoulders slumping a bit. With a sigh, he begins to talk. I don't like telling this story. But it might be useful for you to know it. Perhaps it will serve as a warning. Will you tell me? Krennic clears his throat and starts talking in a sonorous tone that reveals his experience as a bard. I was born into the mighty and proud tribe of the Night Ruby. Our caves were vast, our mine shafts were rich in quartz and metals, and our underground lakes were brimming with fish. And of course, we had plenty of slaves. The Night Ruby was a model of kobold success. It was a tight knit, greedy, and aggressive tribe intimidated even a few of the nearby human settlements. But there was a flaw underlying our power. Once, long ago, the leader of our tribe signed a pact with the devils, promising them the soul of every tribe member in exchange for help and prosperity. Since then, every new All Watcher had to agree to the pact. The power of the tribe grew as of the number of lost souls. It was like that until our leader, Ermak, came to power. She was a principled and proud elder who didn't want to bend the knee to hell. So she refused to sign the pact, 
and all kinds of calamities befell our tribe. The tribe was attacked by its neighbors at the devil's instigation. Epidemics broke out, and our slaves rebelled. They came after their former masters in the dead of night. Our clutches of eggs were ravaged, our altars were desecrated, and our warriors were slain in their burrows. The slaves paid us in full for our cruelty and arrogance. They hunted us, chasing us down through the caves and mine shafts, level by level. Uh, when we were finally left alone, we had no idea where we were. All we saw around us was darkness, and lurking in that darkness were bloodthirsty and dangerous predators. After raising his voice dramatically, Grunek suddenly stops. Then he adds with a teasing smile. I think this moment is enough of a cliffhanger to stop here. Yeah, I've got suspicions about you. Here we go. I come in friendship and right away I'm distrusted. So what is it that's got you worried? Your words are full of mysterious omissions. What can I say? I'm a kobold of many secrets and contradictions. I keep my mouth shut and the rest of the world at arm's length. That's just my nature. Can't help it. I have nothing to say yet, but I just had something to say. Well, that's good. I was starting to worry. I can almost hear the noose swinging in the gallows already. I don't want to be the first kobold in history to be executed for crimes I didn't commit. I'd like to know more about you. I'm flattered. What's so special about me? I've never accomplished any feats on the battlefield. I don't know any special crafts. I don't even belong to an exotic species. I don't have the slightest idea what you find so interesting about me. Remind me who you are. Okay, that's a repeat dialogue. Uh, what, do, what do you do? I'm a traveling bard. I can already foresee your next question. How does a bard, who also happens to be a kobold, manage to earn a living? All the civilized races of Avistan know that when you encounter a kobold, the best course of action is to smash its skull, trample it with a horse, and burn the remains just in case. Well, the prejudice that, ahem, civilized peoples have regarding my kind is quite understandable. Our infamy as robbers and murderers is more than, de more than deserved. So just imagine the spectacle in any tavern when an articulate kobold in decent clothes shows up, offering to share a story or two for a few coins and a mug of ale. I assure you, no matter how big of a deal you are here, if we drop by any tavern in Andorin, our eyes will be on me. I'm an exotic oddity. Now why did you decide to come here, to the world wound? I just don't like it when the residents of the lower plains get involved in the lives of mortals. I firmly believe that we don't need any advisors to help us handle our own affairs, and we need overlords even less. You're different from other kobolds. So, are you expecting this stupid kobold to praise dragons and boast about his, ex uh, his exploits? A critic uh, grins mi mischievously. Life has given me many opportunities to communicate with beings from other races, so I found a common language with them. Right, I have no more questions. Well, that's good, because I'm starting to run out of answers. I have a question about demons. You mentioned you know a lot about them. My humble knowledge is at your, at your disposal. What is the demon's main weakness? It's the fact that they are hostages to their own nature, and by their nature, Humans are just a bunch of mad apes, a grotesque parody of ordinary chaos. You don't need to make a bunch of apes angry. You just give one of them a banana and arm the other with a stick. They'll kill each other without your direct intervention. And how do you know so much about demons? Alright, that's repeat dialogue as well. Uh, do you know anything about the wounds inflicted by demons that first appear, then disappear, and later reappear again? Do I need to resort to platitudes such as the weirdest tricks can be expected from demons? Or can I just skip that part? I never heard anything like you're describing. The new sorts of nasty stuff appear in the world wound every day. However, think about it some more. Don't you think that this wound doesn't cause enough trouble to be something that demons did to you on purpose? When you're hit by the magic of the abyss, you know instantly that death is coming your way, and fast. Now, I wouldn't say it's clear, but sure. That's a bold statement. That's what I was thinking. Have you heard about my unusual powers? I've heard that I've heard you're either extremely lucky or quite the opposite. You survived the massacre in Canaveras just to spearhead a new suicide mission. On the other hand, you survived then, and most likely you will survive now. Good luck in this noble endeavor. Alright, I have to go. Good luck. I believe you'll need it. So he is a semi-interesting character. 
he he feels out of place. Like he goes from being very almost like benevolent and mysterious to being very snarky. Alright, so then we go to the underground hideout next. Uh, we have to go back. So after that, we'll go back to the camp and rest. We'll grab Darren and go to Heaven's Edge. Alright, really not looking forward to this fight. This will hurt. You won't survive me. All right, let's see where that gets us. This obstacle fall. Oh, they went the wrong way. Are they fighting each other? I don't know what's going on there. Now Lana's attacking the Nabasu. I will bring down the divine wrath. Oh, she's over here fighting. I realize. And once again, Phantasmal Killer got a kill. Fantastic. Endure this. I'm all right. You're <laughs> about me. That's a tough little fight. As it should be. I'm oh, sorry, I have to get through the fort. Shoot. We're still super weak. All right, we'll do this fight. See how it goes. I don't think it's gonna go very well. But they only have three units.
Oh, cool. They changed the uh, color of the infirmary. Another resounding victory. Well, the cultists protected their caravan of valuable supplies. To the death, the crusaders prevailed. It, it seems that the demon worshippers plundered the treasures from nearby Sarkorian ruins. Neat. Not leveled up yet. We're getting there, though. We can't go this way with our party just yet. We'll head back to camp. Um, they rest up and then we'll grab Darren. Or Heaven's Edge. So I'm going to do that real fast to set up for the next episode. And. That'll be that. In fact, what I'll probably do is call the episode while I'm in camp, because I want to look through the uh, merchant's inventories again. And see if there's anything that I want to buy. I'll go ahead. So yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll rest uh, off camera. I'll go back through all the merchants, buy whatever I feel like buying, and I'll go over all that at the beginning of the next episode, and then we'll head towards Heaven's Edge and deal with uh, Darren's companion quest. I think that sounds like a good plan. Hypothesis. The party's sexual interest in me surged. It became known that I am a Kitsune. Oh man, come on. Wait. So never been a problem. Alright. If rat folks had been voted into the game. I'm going to survey my comrades in order to confirm my hypothesis. I'll smart, but uh, then finish reading it. Do not even consider the possibility that I do not find oh dash at all. The tail, obviously. Alright, I'm gonna call it here off camera. I'll do what I said, and uh yeah, we'll head towards Heaven's Edge and deal with uh, Darren's companion quest. Hopefully I remember to grab him. I'll probably forget, but I don't know, we'll see. Either way, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.